P2B as we welcome our Momentum Pro Tears lady and CGL senior uh, ladies captain. Start the clapping and screaming for Yolani Fori. Thank you. Okay, she's coming now. I'm here. Me. I, I'm very excited. There we go. How's it, Yolani? You all? I'm good, thanks, and you? Good, no complaints. My name's Taylor. Nice to meet you in the virtual nice space. Nice to meet you, too. Cool, man. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to hang out Thanks with us. You. And the new normal means that we're on our phones and laptops a bit more. Uh, so before we get going, I know everyone's asked you this question, but we don't know the answer because we haven't chatted to you yet. How's things been going? Are you coping? Are you pushing through? Um, about seven, almost eight months into lockdown, the sanity still there? I think so. Luckily, I'm a teacher as well, so that's keeping me on track at least. So. <laughs> okay, okay, lovely stuff. You've got that calmness about you. Like, I'm very excited, and you're just bringing that zen down. I like that. That's that's important. So you yeah. mentioned the teaching, but um, how, how, how's it been? The education been, side I must of the, the, the teaching have been tough, um, especially during the first part of lockdown where we went online and stuff. That was really hard, but being back at school has been great. I think everyone's just missing the sport at school and especially mm. at and all those things. Yeah, hundred percent on the on the same page. You you mentioned sport. How's uh, how's the training been going? Have you been managing to get into the nets? Um, yeah, so still we, good, injury free. Yeah. yeah, so we started off in September with our one on one sessions and then towards the middle of September we started with small groups, five in a group or four in a group. And we started now last week with our first once a week where we started with like a session and stuff where it's been um, live nets and everything. So we're slowly getting there, working hard, running hard. Um, so we're on track. Luckily, it's like off season only start started now. We normally by now played our second, third game even. So it is a long, it's going to be a, a bit hectic season because we're squeezing one season into half a season. Um, but other than that, I'm very excited for the season to come. Oh, that's great to hear. And how's the, how's the body coping of the muscles all in order? The oil is getting back. Yeah, it is. Eh? I must say, I'm surprised my arm isn't that sore anymore and stuff. And surprisingly, it wasn't sore in the beginning either, thinking I haven't really done anything for five months. Um, but other than that, I must say it's, it's getting there. Okay, okay, nice. And how is that feeling? I mean, because as a, as a pro, cricket's part of your everyday activity. Just getting the bat and ball back in hand, getting back on the field. How is it getting back to that normality? I think it's uh, growing up and stuff, you, you've got that in you. So it's mm. really, you've got already. But I must say, like um, Wednesday, we yesterday, we had a proper fielding session where it was hitting hard on the ground and we had to um, bound, do boundary fielding, those type of things. And we were struggling actually because it, we, at all, I'm getting to the point of, I think we've, we haven't done that for five months and all of a sudden now we must catch a ball or stop a ball and our hand-eye coordination has gone so bad we we have to actually get used to that again so i think from everything it's more the fielding part that is mm. lacking because of that hand-eye coordination where the bowling and the batting is actually quite fine but i must say only thing i've been struggling to get back into or not struggling but that's taking a bit longer to get back into is the fielding don't worry, I'm sure you're fine. I've been struggling to catch remotes at home because I've been sitting on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you're going to be fine as soon as your hands get used to the leather of the ball again. Definitely. So, so Yolani, what it's been all about, um, our, our Q&As with, with our players, it's been fantastic because we get to know a bit, bit more about the player. We've got a bit more time with you. Um, it's, it's very different to your, your, your media interviews after or before a game or leading up. You know, so so from our side, we're all about the journey with the KC Mini Cricket family. So yeah. the tough question, the big one, Yolani Furi, who is she? Where did it all start? <laughs> I must say it started in the backyard with my brother. I think most girls start with that story. Um, you get the love of the game starting at a young age. Um, with girls cricket at my age, um, yes, you do your mini cricket, those type of things. But I think it's because mini cricket doesn't always all... Um, girls cricket there's not always all the schools doesn't always have cricket for girls and 
seeing girls participate in mini cricket now with the boys is so encouraging and stuff as well. And it's just, it, it's like a bug biting you and it just doesn't leave you. So like I'm saying, it started in the backyard with my brother. I grew a love for the game and the rest is basically history. Okay, lovely stuff. Um, we are we glad that your brother nudged you to play or you nudged him to play. Whoever nudged you to play, we're glad that that day happened. Um, <laughs> did you also play with, with the rules if you if you hit a six into the neighbor's yard? Was it was it out or not? Um, sometimes. I always yeah. I bet first. By the time my brother needs to bet, I'm tired, then I go in the house. So. <laughs> <laughs> Being a bowler, so I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Nice, nice. You're very, very smart. And then uh, how did it happen, the growth from, from playing in the yard with your brother and then moving into a junior space and a senior space? Was it through primary school or high school? And when did you um, realize what, what, what you wanted to specialize in? Yeah, so for me, it more started at high school. Um, I specifically went, I was lucky enough to go to a high school that had girls cricket. So that's where nice. the love of the game started and stuff. And from there, I basically had hockey, I had athletics, I had basically any sport and mm. I hit matric. I decided I'm going to specialize in, I obviously summed up my options and stuff and decided cricket is the way to go and it worked out for me. So Nice. We're happy for you. We want you to be more excited that it worked out. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. It didn't just work out. I mean, you, you're donning national colors. That's a, that, that's a big, big deal. So... Take us through that. Take us through that. You got your ODI debut against Sri Lanka in 2014. Um, it's a beautiful moment, man. What was the lead up to it and, and how did it all come about? Sure, I must say, I've been in the, like, in the since 2012. So I made the SA8 team in 2012. We went to Zania and in 2013, I no, sorry, the first year I kept, I kept SA8 team in Tanzania. Second year um, was the Tanzania tournament. We managed to win both tournament or both years tournament as well. And then 2014, I just out of the blue, I got my call and say, "Hey, listen, you are selected to go to Lanka and stuff." And yeah, so it was you know, one of my proudest moments so far. Um, and then from there, it's just unbelievable. I managed the two places every subcontinent. I've been in um, Sri Lanka, India. We played Pakistan in Dubai. It's just unbelievable. It's Is it enough for you? It's indescribable, basically. Mm. Yolani, I'm not laughing at you. I'm fascinated with this, but I also hear yeah, auntie dishing up food for a family. I think it's Maureen, okay? So I'm just going to mute Maureen. Maureen, if you can hear me, I'm going to mute you quickly, okay? Oh, can you hear me? I can hear everything that's happening. Everything. <laughs> so can you please mute back yourself? Back okay, lovely Maureen. Are you muting yourself? <laughs> Yolani, I'm so, so sorry. Okay, so that, that's amazing playing in the subcontinent because we hear about it back home and we hear about it as being this baptism of fire where each space differs from the other. So you start off in Colombo, debut in Sri Lanka, then you said you played in, in India as well and other couple of subcontinent countries. What was it like playing in those conditions compared to what we usually have back home, especially in Gauteng, where the wickets are very different? It's, um, wickets is slow there. It spins quite a bit. And um, so it's a spinner's dream, which was perfect for me, being a spinner and stuff. And then, yes, it's a bit and it just randomly rains and it rains harder than what it rains here and we used to in India we played mainly most of the time in the evening um so it did the temperature did drops most of the time but during the day it's it's hotter than Durban basically and um so you take almost like a Cape Town spinning wickets mm. combined with the Durban's heat and humidity and mm -hmm. you go and it's such an experience actually it's I love the fact that you could uh, pull on different South African elements to so say we can take Cape Town, we can take Durban and a bit of Joburg and we're going to make the subcontinent <laughs> just so that you have some sort of reference. Thank you for that. And then um, I, I know that the subcontinent is, is cricket mad and um, the awesome thing is that we get numbers in for both men's and, and women's matches. What is it like playing in front of those crowds? 
Yeah, I must say I haven't really played in in front of a big crowd except in when we went to Bangladesh. Mm. Um, we had quite a big crowd there, um, and yeah, it's it's something different. It makes you proud, even if they're not cheering for you. It just hearing people cheering of that capacity and stuff. It it just brings another level to the game as well, and pride and those type of things. So it's like yes, I want to perform, I want to do well, and I want to show off my skills and stuff. Lovely stuff. And you you you, you mentioned being an offi um, and going to subcontinent is kind of like the holy grail of spin where you where you learn your craft so before before we get into uh what was it like bowling on those wickets um why off spin why why deciding to become a spinner how did that happen because it's not an easy skill yeah no definitely i started off um i'm actually also from the cape i was born here in Joburg, but then we moved to cape town and I played for Borland. And when I started playing there, I was actually a medium pace bowler, but I could never bowl it straight. It was always going down leg. And then my coach, um, Kubus Root, who passed away a few years ago, mm. he turned me into Ofi. I think it was just the easier option as I struggled with the leggies and stuff. And yeah, so I'm, I must say, only the last two, three years, I've been mastering the skill of, of being an off spinner. Um, but yeah, so I enjoy bowling spin. Um, I enjoy the flight and the dip and the turn. And there's so many variety of things that can happen in one ball. It's just, it, it's always a challenge to the batters as well. And then uh, taking that, that trade that you learned, that you changed, and then heading to the subcontinent. I don't want to only focus on the subcontinent, but I yeah. think it's an awesome experience because um, you got to apply a trade on those wickets. What, 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 was, it, what was it like bowling on those decks? Sure. Um, I was I was surprised. It didn't spin as much as I expected it to spin. Um, although the leggies normally get a lot of spin. For me as an offy, if I landed it correctly, then I did get a lot of spin. But um, by the time we play and stuff, the wickets are quite hard. And uh, most of the time we bowl first, those type of things. So there's not a lot of um, scuff marks and stuff. And especially like with the men, they're heavy on the wickets and stuff where the ladies are not that heavy. We don't always get that bowling marks where we can pitch it in and those type of things. So to my surprise, it wasn't as exactly as I expected it. I expected it to turn square. It turned about 45 degrees. So it was close enough. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was um, a good experience. Actually, to experience it yourself and not just to hear people talk about it and stuff was the best mm. part. Okay, beautiful. And then let's just, uh, let's just uh, bring it back home. Uh, you, you mentioned you're starting out to play cricket with your brother in the backyard, but then once you hit school, you start taking it a bit more seriously and in matric you make your mind up and then you start focusing. From your side, you, you must be happy with the way in which women's cricket in South Africa has, has grown over the, the, the past couple of years and now we're in a space where contracts are available and there's more tours and, and it's just flourishing year in and year out. Mm. No, no, definitely. Um, from where I started off, I've always been, we've, as women's cricketers, we've always been lucky. We never really had a, 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 um, expenses towards the game. Things were always covered for us. Traveling were covered for us. We even got, or we still get meal allowances. And I, like you mentioned, with the women or the national team, it's just flourishing. It's just um, getting better and better and better. And now with the Super League that's taking place as well, it's just... Putting, we used to have the Super Fours, so it's almost like the Super Fours again, where it's the, uh, was it 44, 50 best players in the country but, um, playing against each other. So we're definitely going in the right direction with regards to that. And I must say, a um, big hand um, applause to CGL. We are busy signing um, contracts with CGL. It's not like the men, though, but it's definitely something. Um, so we're definitely getting or going in the right direction and just the uh, sad part is I'm going to miss all the big things that's still to come. But then hopefully by that time I'll be able to give back to the game as well. Mm. well I'm sure you're still going to be in the game for a very, very long time yeah. in, different, yeah. in, in different spaces. And, and, and just looking at the different spaces, I'm sure that there's, there's, there's more younger women starting to play senior cricket, which is which is a positive and, and a step in the right direction. And I'm sure CGL is at the front of that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I mean, we've got 
there we've got the under 19 World Cup that was meant to be played now this year. Um, so we're already getting in the right direction. We've got a few youngsters that's in our group, in our squad as well. That we're busy getting ready and um, those type of things. And there's quite a few of them that's up for selection for the Super League or going into the draft for the Super League as well. So it's definitely something we need to look at. Um, there's quite a few players that's starting to um, draw closer to the retirement age as well, including me, unfortunately. <laughs> You're still um, very young. Don't worry. You're still very young. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's definitely, it's important to get the youngsters going and exposing them to um, a higher level of cricket as well. And that's one thing I would say that the girls cricket still needs a lot of development compared to the senior women's. Um, if we can start closing that gap as well, then it will just um, blossom from there. Mm, I hear you. And yeah, fingers crossed, man. Let's hope that that gap... Uh, it does close and it will keep moving in the in the right direction. And then just uh, looking at you, you a bit more um, throughout your career, it can be on or off the field, from coaches to family, whoever you want it to be. Who's been the, the, the mentors and the inspirations uh, during this journey? I must say it's definitely my dad. He just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. And so it was definitely him and then I. Obviously, my late coach, um, Kubis Red, that was a big inspiration as well, that always kept pushing me, and he created that love of the game for me as well. And, yeah, and he gave me the knowledge of the game as well, so, yeah. Nice. And does your, does your dad play a bit of cricket? Or, uh... I, he's actually a fisherman, so he follows <laughs> everything about cricket, but I don't think he's ever played cricket. <laughs> La that's the support we love. Eh? That's, that's love. We go... My dear, whatever you do, I'm in your corner. If you need me to, if you throw downs, let help you bolt to cones, I will be there. That is awesome. Shout out, shout out to your pops for that, 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 that amazing bit. And then um, career highlights, career highlights. What's been those moments that have stood out again on or off the field where you just went, wow, this, this has been worth it. This journey is absolutely amazing so far. I think um, definitely, obviously making my debut and um, just on regards to that, People always ask me, what's the proudest moment you have in cricket or in your national career? And it's standing there in front of the crowd or the supporters and singing the national anthem. There's no other feeling than that. And singing the national anthem at assemblies or with mm. team um, when you're crowd in part of the crowd and stuff, it's completely different when you're actually the player on the field singing the national anthem. And besides that, I must say, um, I'm fortunate enough to be working at a boys' school currently at Kips, Um and I'm head of or teacher in charge of cricket there, and it's just been great for me there as well. So that's also in my teaching career. It's also cricket pushing my teaching career as well. So nice. Do the boys know how cool their teacher is, though? Are they aware? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. No, they. they Every now and then they chat to me about cricket and now the IPL is on and then they ask me who's my favorite team and oh man, did you see that game last night and those type of things. So it's it's for a female teacher to relate with us on that level, on a different level. It's just actually incredible and seeing their smiles on their faces when we can talk cricket and stuff, it's actually like... A... You are a rock star, you are a rock star and... Uh... They, they're all serious when they speak to you, but in the outside, they're like, oh my word, this is amazing. <laughs> when you go to the yeah. net, you must just bowl, them, you bowl to them a bit and then dismiss them just to keep them humble. Yeah, just... no, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and then tell me, um, coach, coaching the youngsters, etc. What what's that been like, adding that, that different perspective now? Because you're still playing, but then you're also working with youngsters who are in different maturity spaces, different skill spaces. How's that been? It's, it's for some kids it's challenging others so now you live like you mentioned you um dealing with different skill levels and stuff so i find it i love um coaching the ones that struggle a bit that's not that far advanced um just to get them to hit the ball nice and that just puts a smile on my face and I, when they get it right i can see these smiles as well where the ones that's a bit better and stuff it's I, it's almost like i get bored coaching them because I want a challenge as well. Mm. I enjoy the ones that's not there yet, and yeah. I can take them there. 
but it's also like I mentioned as well. It's also nice coaching the ones that's got a bit of skill. Now, you, now you can teach them more knowledge of the game, or you can go deeper in into the game with them and stuff. So, um, I'm coaching the 11 a team as well, and um, it's such a blessing actually because now it's they're not big yet, but they're also not small anymore, and. Mm. A nice age where they listen to you, they try what you ask them to try, and those type of things. Lovely stuff, man. You're inspiring on and off the field and making sure the game is growing. I love the all round yeah. approach. Don't forget to rest in between. I hope you're finding time <laughs> for yourself. I rest on weekends if I don't okay. play. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Maybe yeah. on Sunday or two, the evening yeah. before card plant, before the eight o'clock yeah. movie. <laughs> and then we, we, we slowly but surely heading into the back end of, of our catch up. Uh, Yolani, and a quick one from from my side, man. Um, just your favorite players over the over the course of your career, and who of those players have you been fortunate enough to meet or, or share or share a change room with? Mm. Um, I think from a men's point of view, it's definitely John T. Rhodes with his fielding that really, mm. inspired me. and that's why at my age, still being foolish and diving around, waking up with a sore rib every now and then. <laughs> Um, but it's just, it teaches you to put your body on the line for the team and you never know. So we we learned this saying from one of the ex-national um, cricketers, Shandre Fritz. They yeah. always say, you never know. So you never know, if you don't put in the dive, you never know if you would have stopped it. If you don't go for that six, you never know if you were going to hit that six or not. So that's one saying that's been sticking around with me as well. Um, and then also Hashim Amla, that coolness and calmness of him and when he goes about it and there's no stress there's no fear there's nothing he just go through his routine and does what he needs to do okay lovely stuff two two awesome players and uh shandre also an awesome player yeah. um from the western cape shout out western province i'll take <laughs> that one <laughs> and then and then um, you, you mentioned uh, the late uh, Corvus Rote, also a fantastic coach uh, during yeah. his time uh, with Western Province. Um, moving, it, moving it forward as, as we close off, your, your message or your, your words to one, any aspiring cricketers out there, and especially our ladies cricketers, and then also to the mini cricket coaches, the KC mini cricket coaches, just a, a message to them. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll start off with the mini cricket coaches and things. I think we don't always realize how important we are in a kid's life. And just to see those smiles on their faces when they get something right or catch a ball or bowl someone out, it's, for me as a coach as well, it's a ridiculous, unbelievable feeling that you get. And the feeling that you get just times it by five or even ten. That's how the kids feel about it. And we are creating the future for tears. And the harder we work, the better players we will create. So... Yes, it's our base of the country. It's the base of the pyramid for the cricket. And that's why the bigger the base, the bigger the top will be as well. And then, so as many cricket coaches, we actually, or, yeah, we play the most important role of the whole cricket system. So even though we don't always get recognized as um, great coaches or we're doing the hard yards behind the scenes that nobody sees, so big ups to everyone that's doing that and keep doing it. Trust me, people do see it. People do notice it and they do appreciate it. And then just for any future cricketers, upcoming cricketers, always work hard, never look back. And you never know, like I was saying, it's train hard and someone else might always be training harder than you. So never stop training until you make it to the top. And when you make it to the top, then the hard work actually starts. Lovely stuff. Thank you so much, our uh, Proteus Ladies player and skipper of uh, CGL senior side. All the